Are you in need of tactile graphics to support the education of a blind student? Don't know where to start? Well, stick around and I'll show you some different options for making tactile graphics. Try to get something to suit your needs and your budget. Welcome to IREAT, Braille and Visual Vision. Tactile graphics are a key component for blind students who are studying science, technology, engineering, and math, not to mention art. Think about the old adage, a picture tells a thousand words. It could not be more applicable in this case. Like try, for instance, to describe the U.S. map with each state, the size of it, the shape of it, the location. Trying to do that without tactile graphics is virtually impossible. To provide an equal education for blind students, we need to provide tactile graphics. Blind people still have a visual cortex and can use it. We just have to deliver the information to them by touch instead of by sight. But there are so many random products for making tactile graphics. Where do you start? First, you've got to consider the budget that you have. If your budget is tiny or non-existent, get ready to spend a decent amount of time making tactile graphics. In the old days, teachers would use glue and string and other craft supplies, whatever they could find that could make shapes that could be felt. And this is going to take a little bit longer to do it that way, but there are ways to just manually take art supplies and make things that can be felt and make shapes that can be understood by touch. It's not necessarily the ideal method, but it's something, and something's better than nothing. The next step up in price would be the tactile drawing boards, like the TactiPad. These drawing pads use a special paper that raises when you draw on it. These can be ideal if you have time for manual drawing. Typically, we recommend products like TactiPad for students to do their own drawing, particularly since it has tools for technical drawings. Tactile graphics experts will tell you that students who create their own tactile graphics are also more easily able to read tactile graphics created by other people. Personally, I think a tactile drawing board for each blind student is a must-have. A super affordable option for a tactile drawing board is a sensational blackboard. You just draw on it, flip it over, and feel the impression on the other side. Next up the budget ladder are swell form machines, like the swell form machine from American Thermoform. What swell form machines do is they use a special paper, you print first on the paper with ink, and then you run it through the swell form machine and it raises the ink portions of the page. If you already have a master copy made, there's also a device to quickly make tactile copies of your document using heat called a thermoform machine. Thermoform machines are used most often in areas where the environment is very humid and braille paper can degrade quickly. Thermoform is also useful for making tactile renderings of physical objects like coins. More often than not, students who need tactile graphics also need braille. In the old days, that meant buying a tactile graphics device and a braille embosser. But nowadays, braille embossers are expected to do both braille and tactile graphics. Not every embosser can do it, but nowadays most desktop embossers can produce usable tactile graphics and braille. Some of them even print ink now, but I'll tell you about that in an upcoming video. When it comes to choosing the best embosser for tactile graphics, all I can say is ask for samples. Embosser manufacturers are famous for competing on useless specifications that don't even make sense. Who, for instance, cares how fast an embosser prints on draft mode? Nobody can read the garbage braille that comes out on draft mode, so why even list it? Why make it a thing? Just list the speed where it makes usable braille. For graphics, it can be even more confusing, with some manufacturers listing tactile resolution up to 500 dots per inch. If you want to make confetti or just cut up the page, I can get you some scissors for a lot cheaper. So I just say make sure to ask for samples, see what the embosser can actually do on paper before you buy. You want to make sure you get the right thing because these suckers are not cheap. One specification that does make a difference with tactile graphics embossing is the ability to do variable height dots. That's a feature unique to View Plus and their rebrands like the Irie embossers. And it allows you to distinguish between lines that might be touching each other. It allows you, for instance, to have a graph with grid lines that are lower than the graph lines. You can easily distinguish even where the shapes intersect. It also allows you to put more information on the page because you can actually have things that touch each other and still distinguish between them. Otherwise, if you don't have variable heights, it can be more difficult to distinguish lines when they're touching each other. The ultimate in tactile graphics embossing are the tiger embossers. Tiger embossers create a dot with a smaller tip than a regular rounded braille dot, so you can put dots closer together without compromising the paper. Combining the tight dot placement from tiger embossers with the ability to also do variable height dots make tiger printers the ideal embossers for printing tactile graphics. No matter your technique, the fact that you're taking on the challenge to create tactile graphics is to be commended. 
And at iRE AT, we're here to help. We have a growing list of training videos for Braille and Tactile Graphics on our iRE AT YouTube channel. You can also reach us with questions in the comments or follow some of the links in the description below. Subscribe to the iRE AT YouTube channel to be updated when new Braille and Tactile Graphics training videos are released.